I mean, what are the differences between like Bain, BCG, and McKinsey and the types of people that they're looking for? Like my my knowledge is probably a little outdated. I think like McKinsey in my mind is obsessed with communication. Um, BCG, I think is a little more analytical. Um, like it's like a nerdier academic vibe. <laughs> that, that was my experience at the firm. It, it ranges in geography and um, office to office, but what, what do you see from uh, these companies now in terms of what they're looking for? <laughs> Absolutely. So I can sense, I actually, funny enough, I have a, like a one hour video on this and how to explain all of this, but we'll, we'll hear for an hour. If I do that, so I'll give a high level summary, but anyone who's interested, if you just go to my consulting offer website, we actually have a, a couple of blog posts on this as well that we'll talk about the differences of it. But, but the funny example, high level, and it is similar to what you mentioned, Paul, is if you think about all the different firms, the first thing I'm going to say is if you're trying to get into consulting, Realize that if your goal is to learn, to grow, and to have this professional mentorship and this coaching, all the major firms will do this. Because again, you are the main asset to them is the people. So their incentive is to train people. It doesn't look good when you're at a client and you make a, make a mistake. So they all the big firms will train you and give you proper training. That being said, the culture is very different. It's similar to universities, right? You could be an economics major in a lot of universities, but the culture is going to be different. And when you look at particularly at Bain, McKinsey, and BCG, and this is how I kind of categorize it, and you can kind of see why it is. So McKinsey was the first consulting firm to be created out of the big three. And for them, you can almost think of them as this is like the older brother who is going to Harvard. He is, he he feels that he is right most of the time because he's older, has more experience. And he knows what is best. And that is pretty much what happens when you go into a, a pitch between, let's say, GE wanting to work with McKinsey, Bain, BCG. And that's usually one of the pitches that McKinsey will make is, we've been doing this longer than Bain and BCG. And that's like reflected in that culture, right? So when you go into McKinsey, you get this whole database of knowledge that's been accumulated since the founding of the firm, which you don't find at Bain and BCG to that same level of depth. So that is like the McKinsey USA. We've done this before. And that's why communication is also important is that there's a lot of information. They created the pyramid principle. And it's like, that is what I think about McKinsey is you can think about the older brother who is there. Then you have a BCG, which came up afterwards and BCG, think of it as the second oldest brother. And this brother is like the one who goes to MIT, maybe goes to Carnegie Mellon, goes to tech school. And it's like very engineering focused and because he's very analytically rigorous. So unlike, B, unlike McKinsey, BCG believes that, yes, you can draw from past knowledge, but every situation is unique. So your framework and how they approach every pitch is this is the unique thing that we built for you. And you got to see this in a lot of ways. For example, BCG started two things that other firms are still trying to catch up. One is the Henderson Institute named after Bruce Henderson, who's their founder. And it's all about researching new frameworks, researching new white papers, like literally investing in a separate company to go in and do the research. And then you have BCG Digital and Digital BCG. And that in itself hasn't existed. Now it does in McKinsey and Bain. Yeah. But you have like BCG driving this force. They're like, we're going to get ahead of the market. Instead of relying on what we know, we're going to push the boundaries of analytical honesty and figure out what can be done rigorously from an analytical point of view. So that's that. Yeah, I, th- I think I'll add to this. This is interesting to hear it uh, from your perspective too. I think I went from B- McKinsey where like, it re- they really do obsess over communication and the pyramid principle. So your first week, you're learning how to write memos. You're not even doing like slides. So then you take the memos and writing and turn it into slides. Um, and you're obsessed with like, how do you create the most compelling, persuasive version of a story that is like backed by data? Then I go to BCG and like, I see these slides with like so much data and analysis on it. I'm like, like every bone in my body, like being trained by the McKinsey culture is like, oh my God, what is the, what is the takeaway here? Why, (laughs) why so much information? But I think it's, it's true what you're saying. And I would actually push back a little, like, I think the digital ventures and the Henderson Institute, they're not as central um, to the BCG methodology as you think, but they're downstream of another thing that makes BCG different, which is that each of the offices have a lot of autonomy over how they're run. Like the Boston office might be run completely different than the New York office, whereas like McKinsey is much more consistent uh, across the offices. 
across geography, there's more of a difference, but yeah, that, that was interesting. So I'd, I'd love to hear like how those two compare to Bain. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm going to add another point. So in case anyone's never seen a McKinsey, a Bain or BCG slide. So there's a lot of them publicly, for example, BCG works a lot with the city of Dallas. So you can go ahead and look up any of the BCG because their government, they'll post it online. One of my favorites is you can see what Paul mentioned by just saying, there's like one just called BCG Dallas dog problems. And you can see how much information is just on a slide. <laughs> and then you can compare it to the work that McKinsey does with, let's say with Andrew Cuomo and the New York state government there. There's, yeah, I would go there and you can see the contrast, right? It's like McKinsey's like, what's the takeaway? If I, if the CEO looked at this for five seconds, what's the insight yeah. versus BCG is like, all right, yes, well, there's the insight, but have we factually backed this up to the point where no one's going to question that we didn't do the analysis. So it's like really that, right? And it transitions nicely into the Bain example, which is that, and for Bain, if anyone's curious, you can look at the work that they do for a lot of pro bonos as well. And notice us online. So see the slides. Bain is the youngest brother and the entrepreneurial of the one. And I'll tell you why it's entrepreneurial in a bit. Is that because Bain is the smallest? they also spend the least on infrastructure. So for example, at McKinsey, you literally have a team that helps you build your slides to do your research to help, right? And BCG is like in the middle of that where you still have your knowledge centers and so forth. But Bay, it's like pretty much you're driven on your own. And I remember one time we were on a case that was one of the most important cases for the San Francisco office. And our knowledge expert was dealing with 11 other cases at the time. So you can imagine I get like two hours of our time per week. And so I was like, wow, that's not work. And the reason for it is that Bain encourages this lean model of how to work. And you can see this in multiple ways. You can see this in the way that the slides are made. It's like, you look at the McKinsey slides and the BCG slides, there's a certain format. You look at the Bain slides, like, all right, well, let's keep it local to the case and let's keep it to the team. And a lot of times the data doesn't just come from me emailing someone to find it. It's like, I have to actually go out and find it. So I'll tell, my favorite oh, wow. example of this is that one time, I back in San Francisco, when I was living, my roommate was working at McKinsey at the time. And so we both found out, and it's very obvious we were about the client site. We we're on the same client and different teams because her, the person she was reporting to on their client was former McKinsey. Ours was former Bain. So they used the team that they liked. But we were doing parallel we were doing parallel projects in that this biotech company was trying to launch two different drugs with two different teams led by the respective heads. And for her, one of the things that she wanted to be able to do was to figure out a competitor analysis on how big the sales team was for the another biotech company that was selling a similar drug. And so she just basically emailed the support for McKinsey and then in the morning, she had the information. And so what one of my team members who were doing the parallel scenes with Dude had to do was he went on Google Maps for the manufacturing. So he had to figure out for the manufacturing footprint. And he went to Google Maps and he went to Google Earth and zoomed in on the parking lot and tried to figure out how many cars there were and it looked like how many parking spaces were occupied to try to figure out what that data point was. And that speaks to the scrappiness and entrepreneurial drive of Bay, but also at the same time, the fact that there's not as much resources that you can rely on. Yeah. So one other interesting thing, and I talked about this in my BCG versus McKinsey video, McKinsey talks about Bain and, McKin and BCG zero. Like nobody talks about that. <laughs> uh, at BCG, they talk about McKinsey all the time. They're always like, what is McKinsey doing? What is and they don't talk about Bain. Uh, does Bain talk about the other firms? <laughs> Bain definitely does. It's like the same thing, right? Older brother doesn't care. It's like he's right. Middle brother is like, all right, I got to prove we got to prove that the older brother is not always right all the time. And the younger brother is like, hey, I got to prove I'm right about both of you. So a lot of time, yeah. So we, at Bain, you do get to see exposure from the other firms. Like it comes down from any point of your experience. Like for example, from the beginning, when you get your offer, we talked about how many offers did we win from Bain versus BCG if they had a cross offer between two firms they're choosing from to the middle part where we're in a a pitch competition to get a client, you get these updates about how many percentage we win against these firms to like, even when you leave, they'll even say, Hey, we have an alumni network. We want to support you. And so we do this better than Bain and BCG or McKinsey and BCG. And that's just part of the culture. And I think that is the way you look at it is like, who do you feel like you need to be able to benchmark against? And that's like the, going back to the 
the three elements is like the little brother who has a lot to prove versus the older brother who's been there and has done that.